Hello and welcome to this edition of the Facto Review, a weekly roundup of the biggest stories shaping Mongolia. Here with us tonight is our guest commentator, Mogi Badrel Bontoy. Good evening. Hello, good evening. And I am Milena Mendes. We are live on Facebook at V Television and we love to hear what you're thinking. So please send, our, send us your thoughts on Twitter using hashtag jargal underscore de facto. Coming up on the show tonight. 17 mountaineers found dead after an accident at Mount Otdontingir. Mongolia issues $800 million Girt bond to refinance debt. Parliament amends budget for 300,000 to group bonuses to civil servants. An energy company has become the first to list on Mongolia's new Mongolian Securities Exchange. We start tonight with a very sad news that happened this week. Mongolia's National Emergency Management Agency said on Monday that 17 bodies of the mountaineers who were climbing Mount Otgontengir were dead. Hoshua reported at a press conference, Brigadier General and First Deputy Head of the National Emergency Management Agency, Ge Adyun Adyun Buyan said these bodies were found at an altitude of about 3,450 3, meters, saying that these mountaineers may have fallen from the cliff. The 17 Mongolians, being seven women, were among a group of 27 climbers who successfully stood on Mount Otgontengir, but they ran into a snow avalanche when they were descending. More than 100 people were conducting a, a search and rescue operation with the help of two helicopters and other equipment. Mugi, such a sad news to start this with, but right. what do you think of Mongolia's um, response to this accident? I think our emergency response team um, were very professional. Um, I, I think um, they've been uh, one of our few uh, government agencies that are very professional and when it comes to their job and this is uh, not the first time we've seen them in action. Um, during the summer we had a lot of um, forest fires and uh, step fires. Um, it's obviously very sad um, development that uh, I think as a country we are, as a whole, we are mourning uh, the loss of these 17 cl climbers. And um, But I think our emergency response team are very professional and diligent and uh, they found, were able to find uh, all 17 missing. Um, people uh, in a, I think it was a, uh, enough short of a time. Yeah. Right. And do you think these um, climbers were taking <coughs> the necessary precautions mm -hmm. in order to avoid maybe this accident? Right. Well, obviously, uh, um, during, during this time of the year, um, like some of the professional, more experienced climbers um, uh, gave an in interview saying that during this time of the year it's, uh, there's a high risk of an avalanche, especially when it's, uh, uh, especially, uh, when it get, when it's getting cold and uh, the snow is mel melting during the day and uh, um, uh, freezing, uh, freezing during the night and it's, it's high time for uh, danger of avalanches. So I think our climbers, uh, there were a lot of professional climbers who were guiding uh, the 27 climbers, but uh, uh, one of the criticisms was that they had too many people on one rope, so if one uh, goes or falls, they might have uh, dragged the others as well. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's, of course, it's, uh, even if you are maybe professional, it doesn't matter how professional you are, it's, um, you have to take uh, proper due diligence when it comes to these dangerous situations. And it's in, in any situation, whether it's Mount Everest or not, uh, no matter how professional you are, these kind of things obviously can happen. And, uh, exactly. Right. That's unfortunate, but let's move on to another news here. Uh, Mongolia issues 800 million bond will, um, and it will use funds to refinance debt. And officials said they, they will use the 800 million raised on Thursday from a bond issued to refinance debts as the government bids to slash an onerous budget deficit, def, deficit and, and get its struggling economy back on track, writers mm -hmm. reported. 
Thursday's issue was 6.88 times oversubscribed, with final orders reaching $5.5 billion. The funds will be used to refinance another U.S. dollar-denominated bond maturing in January, and 1 billion yuan, approximately $150 million, some notes with a 7.5% coupon during June 2018 next year. The refinancing leaves the country without any major foreign debt deadlines until 2021. So what does this debt refinancing mean for the health of Mongolia? Um, obviously, in the short term, it's a good news. Um, it, we knew we had to refinance the, the upcoming Chinggis bonds, uh, 500 million, um, even and also the dim sum bonds. We, we, uh, the government does not have, have the money to pay back, so it was obvious that Mongolia would, ha would have had to refinance it. So it's uh, welcoming news that um, we were able to raise uh, more than we needed. It, the original guidance was uh, $650 million uh, with a higher uh, coupon rate that, we, uh, that was actual. Uh, around 6.1% uh, was the original guidance. So. Um, these uh, Gerege bonds, um, are, the yield uh, coupons are much lower, five point, around 5.6%. And uh, because it was uh, heavily uh, oversubscribed, I think government of Mongolia decided to use the opportunity to, uh, to raise maximum amount of money that they could uh, and also lower the yield. So it's uh, welcoming news. But, uh, uh, but the overall picture is that we are only delaying our debts payments uh, along to the next government. So it's been a feature of us since we first issued our first international bonds. That was in 2012. Um, the, you know, that was the previous government in parliament. So we had to refinance that in this year. And now we're refinancing a previous government's uh, issuance. So it's, and then the next government will have to pay uh, the, up, uh, the, the bonds that the previous government raised, uh, issued. So at a higher rate than we originally uh, issued them, so we, we're only delaying our uh, problems to the next uh, government. Government, so yeah. yeah. And can you please give our viewers um, a little bit of details about the closing of the bond? <coughs> sure. Uh, well, the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank, the Bank of Mongolia, they've been on a road show for the past uh, two weeks. Um, uh, London, New York, Boston, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Um, they hired three big banks. Uh, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, and J.P. Morgan. Uh, th these uh, investment banks are uh, not unfamiliar to Mongolia. They've uh, they all worked uh, in some of in all of our previous most of them uh, most of our previous uh, issuances. So they they're not strangers to Mongolia. Um, well, um, it's welcoming in the short term. Uh, you know, it just t tells you that uh, in investors are chasing high yields wherever they can find it, and it doesn't matter. Mongolian credit rating is rated junk. Um, you know, it's uh, it's still un unsure if the U.S. Federal Reserve will when they, they say they will raise their policy rates, but they, they still haven't uh, figured out when they're going to raise it. So uh, during this uncertain times, um, I think investors are looking for higher yields, and obviously when the Federal Reserve raises their uh, rates, it won't be good for for Mongolia. So we, I think we use the right window of opportunity to, uh, to uh, delay our problems till 21. Right. 21. Well, coming this good news, um, what, is, what is actually the current situation, the current debt situation mm -hmm. of Mongolia? Well, uh, our budget deficit and our debt is uh, at a record high. Um, this year's budget, uh, we were able to lower it uh, within, within the IMF um, Extended Fund Facility Program. Uh, our, uh, our government is, is obligated now to cut our budget deficit, uh, and decrease our foreign um, total debt. So um, within that scope, uh, this year's budget has been uh, a little uh, conservative, and um, we are currently discussing next year's uh, budget in Parliament right now. Uh, the new finance minister said that they will slash a budget deficit by 300 billion dollars next year, but that's still makes our budget deficit too high, um, still too high, but within the, that's w way within the IMF requirements. 
Thank you very much. And we're going to move on to our next topic tonight. The government has announced a one-time salary bonus for civil servants in an attempt to ease rising tensions as teachers, doctors and other government employees <coughs> protest for pay raises. We've been talking about the protest for so long now here in the show. Yeah. The government will be providing a one-time grant of 300,000 Mongolian Tugruk to 190,000 2,000 government employees, said the new finance minister Che Hurilbater, the UB Post reported. Hurilbater said the payments would cost a total 50, 55 billion Mongolian Tugruk. Again, we have been talking about these right. prote protests and strikes for so long now on the show. So, is this a sum Mongolia can actually afford right now? Sure, we can afford it, uh, but uh, but still, I wouldn't. It's it's not the economically. It's not the best way to spend their money. You know, we we, I, we previously talked about the budget deficit, right? So it would be prudent. It would have been prudent to uh, spend all of the uh, more the, the more revenues than we projected this year. We were around 500 billion Tugurks was uh, revenue was uh, was uh, uh, government got uh, more than they projected. And there was a lot of debate about how the government should spend it. But obviously, the right thing would have been to use it to re decrease the budget deficit. But of course, during, you know, when teachers are striking uh, and doctors have, nurses have joined, uh, joined the, uh, the fight, and now even the uh, government, other uh, sectors, you know, cultural em employees of the government, you know, artists that are employed by the government are, have joined the, the, the fight. And the teachers are thousand teachers already announced that they will uh, uh, that they will strike tomorrow uh, uh, without a deadline, meaning that they you know they didn't did not accept three hundred thousand dollars as enough of a compensation. They wanted much more. They want their salaries to be raised, but the government's response is easy because they have an obligation under the IMF to not to increase uh, state employee salary until the end of two thousand eighteen. So the government had no choice. Uh, they couldn't raise the salaries unless they broke the agreement or amended the IMF agreement. So this is kind of a way to, to circumvent that IMF uh, deal and give a one-time kind of but uh, uh, compensation to all state servants. But the criticism was, why not just give it to the ones who are actually protesting? Right. Why not just the doctors, when the teachers, and some of the other ones who were striking? But my my feeling is that uh, they decided to give it to all state servants because they, they couldn't expect, they probably expected more state servants to join the strike, perhaps. You know, if teachers uh, are successful in their uh, negotiations with government, maybe other sectors of the government might have said, maybe this is the right, why not join the strike as well right. and got something out of it. So I think this is just a way to a short-term remedy for uh, a, a big, huge problem that will not go away because of this one-time compensation. Yeah, and we're talking about a 5.5 billion Mongolian Tigruk um, mm -hmm. impact on the IMF and partners, right? right. How is it going <coughs> to look like for, for them? Well, I think the government is uh, justifying it because this is not a salary increase. Um, this is just one-time compensation. Obviously, this is, you know, it's going to help will be a short-term relief for some, some of the state servants, but, but the long-term effects of it will not be good for Mongolia. Uh, so I think the government thinks that uh, they've uh, gotten away with it and the, uh, that it's not in breach of the IMF deal. And you know what, last time, last weekend we were talking on the show about the raising of the poverty level in Mongolia. Mm. And we also mentioned that the teachers are not below the line or not even close to the poverty line. But mm -hmm. what do you think about this um, constant um, asking, protest for asking <laughs> for a raise? Well, uh, they might not be poor under the World Bank classifications, but um, but they are well below the average uh, salary that Mongolians uh, get. We mentioned in previous programs that the average um, salary is a little under one million uh, tukurks a month. Uh, the average uh, teacher salary is around five hundred to six hundred tukurks. So this is way below half of what, almost half of what the average salary is in Mongolia. So it is way way below uh, uh, the average. The average. 
um, but the thing is that the teachers' salaries and even I think state servants in general, uh, the, their salaries were not raised you know, according to what our you know economic growth was. You know, we had some double-digit growths growths uh, in, in only a few years ago, but uh, uh, average state employee salary did not were not raised uh, with that with in projection uh, of the economic growth. So they were, they've been falling behind. They've been falling behind the average uh, sort of a, a, you know personal income that uh, Mongolians have experienced. So I think for me personally, uh, I can't uh, uh, put blame on the teachers for uh, for their uh, for striking for protesting. Um, the government should have uh, hand, handled the issue way long ago. You know, uh, managed to raise their salaries when we had the opportunity, and not come to this uh, come to this when we are in, uh, in economic troubles. Right. Well, we'll have to see how this story develops. And now, moving on to the last topic of our night, the government has announced, oh, I'm so sorry, um, an energy company has become the first one, Mongolia's second ever stock exchange, the Mongolian Securities Exchange. The energy has listed about 78 million shares, or 34% equity, at a price of one to group per share on the exchange, which has been called the M MSX for short. The energy company, which was established in 2011, has operations that produces materials for energy infrastructure and automation. It opened an LED factory for the company Edent LED in 2014, only three years ago. And Energy says it will use the funds to finance an expansion of its operational capacities. So, what is actually what are the advantage, advantages of having a second stock exchange? Well, it's not uh, it's not a secret that Mongolian capital market has been lagging behind uh, every other sector, especially from the other ones in the in, in the financial sector in general. You know, banks dominate the financial sector; they dominate. They provide 90% of the financing in the, in, for uh, businesses and capital market, the stock exchange is only about 5%. So the capital market has been lagging behind and a lot of the blame was on the stock exchange itself and the financial regulator that, uh, the, that oversees, oversees uh, the market. Um, you know, Mongolian stock exchange, the first one, uh, the government owned, 100% government owned, was created in 1992 to handle state privatizations. And it didn't, did not envisage or uh, expect or plan ahead. They, they, they did not worry about the liquidity that should be needed in any kind of stock exchange to be able to uh, price it, price, uh, right price for any uh, stock. Uh, so I think uh, the frustration came out of that. Um, private uh, individuals who created the new stock exchange wanted a stock exchange that is liquid that is more transparent, that is more managed better, um, and have a settlement system that meets the international standards, which is called T plus three. Okay. Meaning that you buy, you buy stock with a small percentage of, of, of what it costs, and then after three days, you pay the actual uh, money for it. So during the three days, you can sell it, buy it anytime, how many times you want, but you, uh, settlement happens uh, three days. So this is the international norm uh, everywhere, everywhere else. And the Mongolian Stock Exchange, the first, you know, we have to <laughs> MSE and MSX. Uh, MSE, the first one, um, you know, they bought a very expensive trading uh, platform from the London Stock Exchange, and then it was supposed to become T plus three, meeting international standards, and then be able to perhaps uh, attract foreign listed stocks to be able to list in. In Mongolia, so that you know trading can happen simultaneously uh, because it'll have the same uh, settlement system. But then, uh, because of you know misinformation or bad bad integration with with the other institutions, you know government-owned settlement center, government-owned clearing system. So these three things did not work together. So they reverted back to the prepaid system where you have to you know put all the money in your bank account first and then be able to put in your order. So uh, and that was the reason why we were removed from the watch list, from the FTSE frontier uh, markets uh, list. If, they, if we were successful, 
uh, it would have been, you know, international funds who invest in indexes would have been able to buy in into Mongolian stock exchange stocks, but then that did not happen. So I think the new stock exchange is trying to fix that. You know, and because it's privately managed, it might be better, they might be, be able to better handle the settlement system, you know, which is not being able to be done by the state-owned ones. And Mogi, can we say that MSE is actually um, at risk of falling behind or not really? Um, well, not at the moment, because the new stock exchange only ha has one IPO that's happening right now. So, but it is giving a signal to, to the gov government, I think. They need to uh, be able to better manage better uh, these, these state-owned um, stock exchanges and the various uh, institutions that are, you know, that surround the stock exchange, and especially at the financial regulator level. Um, so uh, at the moment, it's not going to threaten MSC well. There's nothing to be really threatened because uh, Mongolian Stock Exchange, MSE, does not handle that many trades either. It's uh, 10, maybe 20 million tokens a day trading, it, which is really, really ridiculous. And uh, hopefully the new Stock Exchange will show it how it's supposed to be done. Right. Well, we still have a few minutes left. Mogi, let me ask you, mm -hmm. what is your favorite sport? Uh, football, soccer. Soccer? Yeah. Okay. Do you like basketball? Of course, as anyone would. As every <laughs> Mongolian. So last week we closed up our show talking about the International Federation Basketball Association bringing the three-on-three -three basketball tournament here in NUB actually. And the Asia Cup finished this night with <laughs> some very good news to Mongolians. We'd like to congratulate the Mongolian national team for beating the New Zealand team 19-14. Have you watched any of the the three on three games before? I watched the previous ones that were like exhibition games that were uh, staged in Mongolia. In Mongolia, I I had the opportunity to be there this weekend, and I have to congratulate the committee that is organizing all of this kind of events mm -hmm. here. It's really important to bring to show some support to Mongolian developing sports, and they are in on the road for qualifying for a national mm. for the Olympics in Tokyo 2020. So congratulations to Mongolia. Mogi, do you have any final words for us tonight? Well, um, well let me congratulate um, Mongolia for beating, becoming winners in the Asia Cup. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this gives them a good chance of qualifying for 2020, which is, right. I hear, the first time they will uh, adding a category, the foot basketball three on three. So there might be another category that Mongolia competes in the Olympics besides wrestling and judo. So that's, <laughs> that's welcome news. And it's a team sport, you know. Yeah. We Mongolians are never, have never been good in team sports, in, you know, in, uh, competitively. So this is excellent news. Awesome. Thank you very much for staying with us tonight. Of course, thank you. And I'd like to thank you also to staying with us tonight and listening to this roundup of stories from Mongolia. And I hope you have a great week, Mongolia. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.